I had the privilege. I grew up in Chicago. I love oh, baseball. Hold that against you there, Rob. No, I'm just, I'm hey, so I'm long suffering. I was a Cub fan, right? <laughs> Chicago hot dogs and the Chicago Cubs. What could, what could be better, right? <laughs> but anyway, so I went to the University of Illinois and I was on scholarship. I was a pitcher uh, with the university. And beginning with my junior year, I made the spring trip and I actually got to pitch at University of New Mexico and they played in a minor league stadium. The air was a little thinner, it was high altitude, pretty cool. And after a day I came in relief, my roommate who also played on the football team said, hey Siggs, uh, Billy Graham is doing a crusade right on campus. He said, I'm gonna go, why don't you come with me? And I thought to myself, Jewish kids from Chicago don't do this kind of thing. I said, I'll take a rain check. You tell me what Mr. Graham says. Tom, it was the John Travolta era. I had my silk shirt. I went out <laughs> with, my, with my Italian and Greek buddies and we disco danced the night away. I came back to my room and Doug said, Siegs, you missed it. I said, what did I miss? He said, I got saved tonight. I said, what did you get saved from? He said, I, I gave my life to Jesus. I became a Christian. I said, wait a minute. You've been going to the church building every Sunday on campus. How does a Christian become a Christian? He said, well, Mr. Graham straightened me out. He said, just because a mouse is in a cookie jar does not make him a cookie. Just because you go to the church building on Sunday doesn't make you a Christian. He, Mr. Graham used this term that we needed to be born again. And he said, I invited Jesus into my heart I ask forgiveness for my sins. I believe that he's Lord and Savior and on the third day that God rose him from the dead. And he said that Mr. Graham said, the scripture says if we confess with our heart, we believe in our mouth that Jesus is who he says he is and that God raised him on the third day, we will be saved. He said, Jeff, I was saved. Wow, it blew my mind and I went to bed. Now my senior year, my friend Doug, there was a move of the Holy Spirit on our campus through the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And there was a famous Christian lady on Thursday night of my senior year gonna speak at the campus huddle. My friend invited me again to go hear this person speak. And um, you know me, Jewish kids go, go to these kind of gatherings. I had my silk shirt, my Italian and Greek buddies. We went on campus. It was pre-weekend. We disco danced the night away. But my friend who was a Gentile, we grafted him into our Jewish fraternity house. He said, Siggs, this time you really missed it. I said, what did I miss? He said, a lady named Corrie Ten Boom wow. was the speaker. And he said, this Dutch lady was from a family of clockmakers. But during the Holocaust, they were hiding Jewish people behind the pictures in the walls of their home. They got caught and the whole family died either in concentration camps or jails. But Corey was witnessing her love for the Jewish people right in a concentration camp. And through a miracle, she got released from the camp. I think it was an error, but a Holy Spirit error. It was God getting her out to tell her story about what they did as a family and their love for Israel. And I said to myself, why would a Gentile or a Gentile family wanna risk their neck for a Jew during such times? But they didn't fear for their life. They were more concerned about honoring God and they knew that the Jewish people were God's chosen people. But Corey wanted to reveal to the Jewish people what they were chosen for and that their Jewish Messiah had already been here. I said to myself in private, wow, whatever the real deal is, she's it, her family's it. I went to my grandfather, a Romanian Jew who had actually been a, in a pogrom in Romania. I said, grandpa, who do you say that Jesus is? He said, Jesus? Oh, he was a great rabbi. He was a magician like Moses. You know, my grandpa never said a negative word about Jesus. He said negative words about people who claimed to be Christians who wanted to hurt Jews. But see now, through this testimony, through my friend making me jealous, I saw a different Christian. 
And then as I would walk the campus from my fraternity house, heading on my way to class, all of a sudden, all these FCA people who loved Israel would cross the streets and they would just hug me and they go, Brother Jeff, we love you, man. You're one of God's chosen people. <laughs> then my best friend growing up in Chicago, Jewish, Neil Siegel, Dan Beaver, who was the president of the huddle, his roommate was Jeff Goldberg. He led Jeff Goldberg through the Fellowship of Christian Athletes to the Lord. Jeff Goldberg slipped my best friend, Neil Siegel, who played on the hockey team, slipped him a Bible. My last day pitching for University of Illinois, I was pitching against Michigan State, and Neil came in and really upset me. Our nickname to each other is Siegs. He said, Siegs, I need to tell you something. After a careful examination of the Hebrew scriptures, I've come to the conclusion that the promised Jewish Messiah has already been here. I said, Neil, you, do you believe in Jesus? He said, yes. I said, were you baptized? He said, yes. I said, Neil, what have you done? You're out of your mind. I said, you're not Jewish anymore. He said, Jeff, I'm a completed Jew now. He said, if you read the Old Testament for yourself, I believe you'll come to the same conclusion as me. And I did. I read the Hebrew scriptures beginning in the book of Genesis. I held it up to heaven, just like this Bible. I borrowed my brother's Tanakh that he got as a birthday present. And I said, God, can I have a burning bush like experience like Moses? And is Yeshua or Jesus my burning bush? I came to the same conclusion that Neil did. It was all there. The prophecies, it all pointed to Jesus. I was beside myself, alone with God and my Bible. I fell on my knees. I said, I wasn't looking for Jesus. I didn't think it was Jesus. This is a different Jesus. Mm -hmm. This is the real Jesus, the Jesus who lives inside of people like Cory Ten Boom. I said, dear Jesus, I don't know how to do this. I'm a sinner. Please come into my heart, and I ask you to forgive me for the sins of my life. I told my dad a week later that I gave my life to Jesus and that my friend's Fellowship of Christian Athletes baptized me. He immediately kicked me out of the family. 26 years later, my baby brother gave his life to Jesus. My dad apologized, and God turned my whole life around.